Interview and Job Search Strategies at Work. This is episode 15 of the podcast. Today I'd like to talk to you. It's entitled, As a, As a Company Gets Larger, the co- Its Competencies Go Down. So just imagine you have a, uh, a large company. You know, there's a lot of management. There's a lot of in um, just a lot of stuff, right? Busy work, you know? Um, so what my point is when you hire or when you interview for a job, research, how big is it? Is it a thousand person company? Is it a hundred person company? Is it a 50 person company? As you'll see it, if you're very technical and you're very, um, good at what you do and you can wear many hats, uh, meaning you have a broad, uh, a base of knowledge, then probably your ideal company you want to work for, try to get on really is a company that's, that's smaller, maybe under a hundred people if you can. And you'll, you'll know that by of course, researching the company. But if you're, you're, if you're, if your expertise is say you um, in, in one skill set uh, that is, or, or for that matter, if you have a degree and your degree, uh, it, it's supposedly uh, I've, I've been known. I've talked to recruiters and I've interviewed for a lot of companies that say, um, "Okay, do you have a degree?" You know, there's usually the larger companies want a degree because um, for some reason that's that's what they believe, you know, okay, you have a degree. So you're, it's almost like IBM or I don't know if you've ever watched any of the YouTube stuff on IBM, uh, back in the day, they had like a dress code for the company where they're very strict, you know, and you, you have to meet certain, uh, <laughs> criteria and you have to be, uh, dressed properly, you know, and, uh, even go further back than that. Um, in the sixties, gosh, there was a company that, um, what's his name? Um, uh, Bob, Oh, Bob Noyce, Robert Noyce used to work for, I forget the name of it off the top of my head, but he would, um, he worked for that company in that, and that company it was, I know it was out of the East coast. It was like in the fifties, early fifties. Anyway, um, based on your, your, um, your level of management, in the company dis, you know, distinguished how much, uh, what the color of furniture you had in your office, uh, what type of furniture you had in your office. Uh, so, you know, oddly enough, right. That's just how some companies are. But the point of the point of this discussion, uh, is, or, well, it's just a, my two cents, basically a company, you know, gets larger, you know, you're going to get lost in the woods. You're going to get lost in the in the weeds, if you will. So you, you, what I'm saying is, you're going to have less. You're going to have less influence on the company. You know, you're going to have less. Uh, they already know what they're doing. You're just another. You're you're the cog in the wheel. You know, and so if you're looking to move up, you may not. You may not move up as fast as if you go into a smaller company. You may have to. Uh, raises, you may get raises a lot, uh, more, less frequently, you know, in a large company than you would in a smaller company because they're not going to, you're not going to get noticed as much, you know, it's just too much management between you and the, and the, and the top people. Right. And they've been there. Most likely they've been there a while and they don't want you like, you know, stepping on their turf, basically, you know, they don't want you, um, um, getting in their way, you know, they're, they're there. Hey, that's the company they're looking for that 20 year retirement or whatever it is. Large company, a lot of people, a lot of business. Uh, they have a lot of growth. Um, so of course, you know, I, I could be, you, you could love it. You could be wrong. You know, could, could have a large company and you could do well, you know, they could, they could treat you like a, like you're just the 50 person company. That's really the key right there. You know, if you ever become a manager or a leader, if you will, actually is to treat your, your people, uh, treat, treat your, treat your people as if, you know, you know, all their names, you really, you care for them. You try to promote them. You try to get them 
uh, to where you're at, right? That's the whole key. Get them where you're at. If you have that focus as a leader, you're going to do well. Okay. Um, so that's really it right there. Uh, just, just, I guess what I'm saying is the other thing I'll hit on is everybody knows who Ford, uh, motor company is. Everybody knows who Rolls Royce is, the companies. So their, their business model or the, I guess their, um, motive or, or they call that, um, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, what they do is they, um, it's long and wide or no short and wide. So they, you know, you, you work there, you're a union worker on Ford sometimes, you know, some places you're a union, some places you're not, but for the most part, I think you're a union worker and you do one specific job. You're, you know, that little piece, that little, you put on a tire on a car, you put on the steering wheel on the car, you put on the hood of a car, you put in the motor, right? You do one piece of that. And so your, your pay is accordingly. Um, for instance, it might be 10 folks that put together a car, let's say, right? And I think their pay, let's say it's like 20 or $30 an hour, right? That's three, $300 per hour to that person to put on that, uh, you know, at the company expense, right? And they make a, one car an hour, let's say, or however much they make, you know, so that's $300 for that car, basically. I mean, the price of materials or whatever, but the, the staffing costs for that, probably like $300. Let's, it was a rough estimate. Whereas like a Rolls Royce, same thing. You have 10 people. You might have two or th- three people maybe working on a car. Let's say two people working on a car, putting it together. That, that um, precision, that detail about that car how they put it together, the care they take in putting it together. And um, they obviously are going to get charged or get paid a lot more because they're, 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 how they do things is very specific. Or um, it's, it's, they, they put a lot of care into it, yeah? Um, so that's, that's that thing right there. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, basically that, like, if you see a company and you'll know it right off the top, uh, off the bat, when you, when you apply there that, you know, that you'll see, usually see it in the, uh, usually see it in the job post, you know, um, you can look on their company profile and they'll say like a thousand people or something like that, you know, and then you look at how many offices they have. Right. And then maybe you can look at, um, on like indeed or salary.com, look at what the reviews are about the company. If, if the cons are like a lot of management, you know, like pros are good money, but cons are management warning, you know, warning, you know, cause you don't want to leave a job that you're at now um, that you're just going to walk into and it's got a bunch of problems. You know, you're just wasting your time basically, unless the, the skill set is, is so unique or, you know, you could also think of it this way when you go into a job, take from them, right? Take, take your, take their knowledge. Um, when you, when you go to a job, you know, spend the extra, spend the extra time there, uh, taking the resources, reading their articles. You know, a lot of them have a, an interweb or a, um, like a portal or a, a, a company site, basically that they have all of their knowledge there. So take that time to like, just absorb that knowledge, you know, Take from them, take their knowledge, you know, take, take, uh, take that knowledge that you have there. If you're only planning on working there three months or a month or whatever it is, take as much as you can from them, right? Take as much knowledge as possible from them uh, and then just apply it to your next job. Um, don't just do like the bare minimum. Okay. I'm showing up to work, you know, Oh, oh this is just pays the bills or whatever, you know, really just, uh, you know, um, absorb from them. You know, and and just do your own thing. You know, do the extra work. Come in an extra hour early to do to just learn. You know, maybe they have like a Salesforce site. Maybe they have a SharePoint site, and you, you know, you just you want to learn SharePoint. So maybe you go in and and you look at their SharePoint site, how it's made, and then you go home and say, "Oh yeah, okay," and you make the same thing. You know, you go to you, you draw it out. Right. And then you go home and make something similar. If you like it, if you like what they do and 
so what I'm saying is it gives you, you get, you get ideas from it, you know, like whenever you go to your next job, you'll have a working, working idea that works. You'll have something that works already because you've put up this SharePoint site or this website, WordPress site or wherever it is that your company has. And you've just taken the same kind of how it looks and the layout and you've made, you've duplicated it somewhere else at your, on your home, uh, home lab, or maybe you bought um, a SharePoint site yourself. Maybe you bought a WordPress site. WordPress is free, by the way. Um, and so you don't have to think about an idea. You just duplicate what they have. You know, obviously, you don't do any like anything. You'll get you in trouble. But no, you, can, you know, don't take their <laughs> their their intellectual property uh, from them and 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 migrate over. Don't do that. Of course, no, don't do that. That nothing. I'm not talking about anything like that. I'm talking about just duplicating what, what you see there, you know, in, in a way, uh, maybe for instance, there's a folder name, a SharePoint site and, and a sub site. Maybe it's like, you know, at the company site, it's like the company name, right? And then your SharePoint site, you name it something else, totally different. And then you can demonstrate that ability to your future employer. Um, so yeah, very good. Very good. Okay. Well, uh, appreciate everybody listening to this podcast and have a great day.